Welcome, everyone. We will now introduce our paper, Contrastive Predictive Coding for Human Activity Recognition. I am Harish Harisamudram, and this work has been done at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. The proliferation of wearable sensors such as inertial measurement units and accelerometers present on connected devices, including smartphones, smartwatches, and earbuds, has rendered the large-scale collection of movement data a simpler process. In the typical data collection protocols, participants are often invited to collect data in laboratory settings where video is recorded synchronously for post hoc labeling. This process, however, is challenging as it is expensive, time consuming, and poses privacy concerns. Due to factors such as these, publicly available labeled datasets tend to be limited in size and cover only a few activities in its study. This disparity between the ease of data collection and the laborious nature of data annotation presents us with an opportunity. Can we leverage large-scale unlabeled data to train models that can help improve performance on the smaller-scale labeled datasets? In order to achieve this goal, we apply a self-supervised learning objective called contrasted predictive coding to pre-train on unlabeled activity datasets. The intuition behind CPC is that predicting only the next time step requires a model to learn local variations. However, predicting farther into the future is a much more difficult task and requires a model to learn the slowly varying features or the global structure of the time series data. This process results in more discriminative features. We can begin with a brief overview of the self-supervised learning workflow. It is a two-stage process where the network is first pre-trained on the unlabeled datasets and then fine-tuned to the specific activities of the labeled dataset. In the first stage, the encoder weights are pre-trained using self-supervision such that they are useful for the downstream activity recognition task. For the second stage, the learned encoder weights are frozen and only the classification layers are updated via backpropagation to classify the activities present in the smaller scale labeled dataset. CPC-based pre-training begins with a raw input window of sensor data. It is passed through a 1D conventional encoder to process the raw window and map each time step into a series of higher dimensional Z vectors. Then we pick a random type set T within the input window and pass all Z vectors through an autoregressive network, which our case is a GRU. The GRU summarizes all the Z vectors into a single context vector CT. The prediction networks W are a series of linear layers that input the context vector and predict the K future time steps from T plus one to T plus K. Here, the starting point is chosen at random for each window, whereas the number of future time steps K is kept constant during training and used as hyperparameter. The network is trained to minimize the info and CE loss between the ground truth future Z vectors and the future predictions. This boils down to identifying the true future Z vector for each time step from a collection of negative examples drawn from the same batch. After the pre-training is complete, we take both the 1D conv encoder and the GRU and freeze their weights. A simple multi-layer perceptron is used as a classifier to recognize the activities of interest. CPC is benchmarked on four datasets, including MobiAct, MotionSense, UCI-HAR, and USC-HAT, covering mostly locomotion-style activities such as walking, sitting, running, etc. First, we compare the activity recognition performance of CPC against a supervised learning baseline, which is DeepConnell STM. Here we see that CPC, which is unsupervised, outperforms DeepConnell STM on two out of our benchmark datasets, showing improvements of over 3% in each case. Here we note that the performance of CPC improves over DeepConnell STM, even though it has no access to label information, whereas DeepConnell STM does. Further, as only the classifier is updated with labels for CPC, it uses a fraction of the number of trainable parameters used compared to DeepConnell STM. Next, we compare the performance of CPC against unsupervised learning baselines in activity recognition. Here, we only show the best performing baselines for clarity. CPC shows an improvement of over 2.3% on MobiAct over the conventional autoencoder. For MotionSense and UCIHAR, we see more modest improvements over the baselines. For USC HAT, however, the conventional autoencoder performs considerably better than CPC. This showcases the effectiveness of CPC as an unsupervised representational algorithm as it outperforms the baselines on three out of four benchmark datasets. Next, we take two examples to show the performance of CPC on a scenario of vital importance to activity recognition, which is when very limited labeled data are available for supervised learning. Here, we pass small amounts of labeled data to the models and plot the mean of the F1 scores obtained after five randomized runs. Here as well, we show the best unsupervised baselines for clarity. On motion sense, CPC significantly outperforms DeepConnell STM, obtaining improvements of over 10% when just 10 labeled windows per class are available. 
compared to multitask self-supervised learning, the improvements are over 5% when 100 labeled windows are available for fine tuning. The trend follows over to USC had as well, with CBC performing much better than DeepCorn STM at over 5%. Compared to the convolutional auto encoder, CPC performs better when there are fewer labeled windows per class available. This excellent performance of CPC in a scenario of vital importance to activity recognition really showcases the utility of CPC as an effective representational link algorithm for human activity recognition datasets. This is true in particular when there are very limited data available for supervised learning. In conclusion, we apply and adopt the CPC framework to human activity recognition datasets. CPC shows strong performance on both supervised learning and unsupervised learning baselines, and excellent performance in particular when there are very few labeled data available for fine tuning. Finally, CPC can be easily integrated into existing Boolean pipelines.